Hello and welcome to episode 5 of I Hope You Suffer. My name is Nathan. And I'm Kit. And this week we watched possibly the worst movie of all time, Nudist Colony of the Dead from 1991. I'll, I'll give it this. It was at least more entertaining than Island Claws. Yeah, Island Claws was just boring. This one was... This one, it was all very bad. Yeah, it was and rough. more racist than Island Claws, but <laughs> this movie was one of the most racist, not specifically made to be racist movies I think I've ever seen. It's it's very much that uh, you know early unwoke humor where it's like we'll just throw in a little anti-Semitism and everyone will laugh. You know, like Jew is a funny word, like that kind of shit. It's... Like it, I. I think saying it was, like, a Gwar movie, but, like, not... Like, Gwar has that, like, kind of social commentary, like, tongue-in-cheek humor that, like, you know none of those dudes are, like, yeah. shitty people. They're just kind of, like, pointing out that this shit happens. This was just, like... Yeah. Like overtly racist for jokes. <sighs> it was rough. Oh, God, I don't even know. So, the plot summary of this movie is that... A nudist colony gets shut down by a bunch of religious folks that they then commit suicide and then come back and as zombies to attack any of this church groups that ever come back to like the area they lost their land on. And it's also a musical. Cause... This caught me way off guard. <laughs> I had no idea it was a musical, so they go into their first big musical number, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, I, I part of the description on Amazon Prime was something about like having like a good score or something, good soundtrack, and I was like, "Oh, okay, like whatever." And then like they started singing, and I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" This. <laughs> Movie was directed by a guy named Mark Mark Piro P I R R P I R R O that has a bunch of other movies that I forgot to write down that were essentially looked just as bad as this. Like one of them was something about like rectum. I think I sent you like that well, screenshot. Yeah, the uh, I don't remember the name, but it was about a a man's ass grows super large and starts going on a rampage. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember if the ass is still attached to the man or if it found its way off of him. Yeah, I I, I fully plan on avoiding anything I see this dude's name on from now on. <laughs> Probably for the best. Um, the only actor whose name I wrote down was Forrest J. Ackerman, solely because he was in Dead Alive. Oh. Uh, but he also plays a character, which we'll get into this. Every character in this movie has the worst name ever. But his name was Judge Reinhole. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking dumb. I, I, I wrote. Uh, I'd fucking, we'll get into it now. So I wrote down a bunch of characters' Let's names. Let's go through the names. So we have Peter. Fanny Tr Wipe. Yeah. We have Fanny Wipe, Peter Trickle, Billy McRighteous. Um, He's my favorite character. Yeah. We have a Hispanic Japanese person named Juan Tu. J U A N T U. It's exactly what you think it is for and the rest of the film once it's revealed. Did you get the Ranger's name? I did not. Ranger Big Butts. B Y G B U T T S. The African American man in this movie. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, I looked that up and I was like, this is fucking super bad. Um, I looked, tried to figure out how much this movie cost because and between like IMDB and Wikipedia, all I could gather was that it was between $2,500 and $35,000. <laughs> that is quite the range. Yeah. I, like, cause I feel like it was made on the higher end of that spectrum because it, for, like, 
a dog shit movie, it had decent production value, you know? Yeah, I mean, it didn't look anything worse than, like, most trauma movies. Uh, yeah, like Redneck Zombies. Oh, well, that was shot I'm on, like, VHS. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> Redneck Zombies is real good. We should watch that at some point. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, I also looked up Rotten Tomato scores for this. And I need you to know that audience scores, this is the highest rated one we've watched so far. What? You're right. So, Island Claws... I could have a gift that we should play on the podcast of my face just then. Because I just saw it in my little corner on Skype, and I've never looked so stunned in my life. <laughs> like, Island Claws, I think, was the worst with, like, a nine. That makes sense. Like, and I think the rest of them were, like, between, like, 35 and 40 like abominable i think was a 40 and like i think bait maybe it was like a 36 are you telling me nudist colony of the dead is higher than a 40 percent audience was, score on rotten tomatoes it was a 42 get the fuck out I, of here i don't understand because then i looked at like the amazon reviews and i did some amazon reviews and they're <laughs> delightful like most of them were one two some threes, but there was a handful of four and fives that were basically like, this is not a good movie, but if you just kind of want to watch a real dumb movie with a bunch of friends, this is kind of a good choice. Which, I guess, fair. I think this movie would maybe work better if you're watching it in, like, a group of people making fun of it. We we should have done a live show for it. <laughs> That's good. Just live, just live record us. Just a commentary for it of us just... Yeah groaning and saying what the fuck the whole time <laughs> there was a really fanny wipes there was a what? point in this movie where i think i just blacked out because like i just same like <laughs> section i do not remember at all uh, i think it was when they like the song is like rinky dinky day or some <laughs> shit in there and after that i was just like mm, my brain can't handle this anymore it's done god i'm so mad i watched this movie <laughs> Episode uh, five is Brett sets in. I yeah, I think I think we're gonna peak with bad movies. Like I don't know how we're gonna find something worse than this. We're <laughs> really swinging for the fences early. We're definitely not gonna find anything as racist as this. I think. <laughs> I feel like we'd be surprised. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so, diving into this movie, which spoilers if you plan on watching this, I suggest don't. But one so, hangs dong. Don't don't come yelling at us when uh we spoil nudist colony of the dead. This is a uh, apparently a remastered version because it lets you know by the opening credit thing of that. There's a description they took it of so seriously. Yeah, that that whole opening sequence. Basically, they remastered it by taking out scenes that they shot that they felt were underlit. And replacing it with rehearsal footage. <laughs> so, that basically tells you where you're starting at. My, my note was, this does not bode well. <laughs> the fact that they even apologized, like, you know, we're sorry that some of it won't match up or that the picture quality will vary from shot to shot when I'm watching Nudist Colony of the Dead. Right. And then you go straight into a THX spoof, like when you go to the movie theater. <laughs> I fucking lost my mind when that happened. My, my favorite is it scrolls across and it says Piro Mount. Yeah, instead that's of Param, the name of Piro Mount Pictures, the name of his production company or whatever. Seriously, this movie gets off to a good start. I was like, maybe I'll actually enjoy this. It uh, does that. It has some spooky things. It goes and it says it was uh, written and rewritten and rewritten and directed by. Which means there was probably at least three passes of the script for this movie. And I guarantee you every single one of them went into the songs. Absolutely. Because that's like, the, I mean, they're terrible, but they're, they're also catchy. like, yeah. Someone put some time into it. Somehow. So, after all of this dumb garbage about the remaster and the THX opening spoof... You open up in a courtroom where Judge Reinhold 
is. <laughs> I can't even. I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be laughing at the names the whole time. Oh, I can't. Um, he's presiding over a case where this church group is suing, I guess, this nudist colony for decency. And he, my my favorite name in the whole movie, which was Miss Drupal. <laughs> it's the old lady, right? She's the old lady in the nudist colony, the only person, like, over 35, but it's clearly, like, someone that age, and they just put a super bad loose latex suit over her, so she just kind of looks wrinkly, like a trash bag person. It's, It's so bad, and this was the thing that made me, like think about it being as like a guar movie is like this is the makeup you see in some of those early guar movies like it looks like 100 percent. it looks like they took paint attached yeah, it was it flesh colored as, on a trash bag yeah exactly and like so this old lady is nude and her boobs hang down to her ankles because of course literally and that's why she's missed Dr- it's i as soon as that started, I was like, oh no. <laughs> what, what did we get She into? stood up and I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> uh, so they're, they're all in court. All of the nudists are nude. And pretty much this is the only time you see nudity in this movie. I was so shocked at the lack of nudity. Yeah, it was weird. Like, even, like when they come back as zombies, basically they're all covered in like leaves and dirt. And I think at one point you maybe see breasts again, but for the most part, the only nudity in this entire movie is in this opening scene where they're sitting in the courtroom. The With one place you would think they would maybe breasts. have clothes. I wanted at least one dong battle. <laughs> I expected just one kind of like dong murder in this film, and it did not deliver. Well, I mean, you barely even see anybody get murdered. Like, yeah. It all just kind of happens off screen, and there's like one shot of any sort of gore. It's ugh, this fucking movie. They spent all thirty five thousand dollars on Miss Drupal. I I believe Miss Drupal had a quote in this court scene that is, "Well, Jesus must love hemorrhoids because you're a bunch of assholes," or some shit. <laughs> and of- then at some point, Judge Ryan Hole says to her. Uh, referring to her overly saggy breasts, cover them up or tie them down. <laughs> like, a majority of my notes are just quotes. I, I couldn't keep up. I gave up trying to write down every quote that struck me because they, <laughs> they're coming fast and furious. Yeah, I, like, I kind of took some notes that were just kind of like... Like, I have a note that just says, like, suicide pact. So I'd be like, okay, well, this next scene was, like, the scene where they like, decide to commit suicide and stuff like that. But for the majority, it was, like, names and then quotes and then just... I had a... You did better than I did. I, I gave up on notes altogether I after had, a... I had a, seri- a series of notes about three-fourths of the movie, the ones that I posted on Instagram that are just, fucking what? This is unbearable. Why is this so long? More fun, casual racism. Cool. What? And I wish this song would fucking stop. <laughs> What's incredible is that it feels super long. It feels like a Christopher Nolan movie. But it's 80 minutes. Yeah. It's not even an hour and a half. Yeah. It's... It's like... There's a lot it's an of... Epic. A lot of just, like, people sitting around and talking. Like, you would think there would be, a, like, some more action. But for the most part... At least part, more musical numbers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this whole thing should have just just all been musical. One, they should have committed, just fully yeah. commit. It would have at least been more interesting. All exposition like, through song. Have you seen Cannibal the musical? I have not. It's I think the first thing Trey Parker and Matt uh, Stone from yeah. South Park made, and it kind of reminds me of this, but like better, like. Cannibal the Musical at least has, like, some funny parts in the songs, because, like, South Park is kind of garbage anymore, but they they at least could, like, they wrote some, they could write some tunes for good, the show. Yeah, they had some good music numbers. And so that movie kind of, like, holds up, but 
they, this, this, this seems like this is what this, this movie was trying to shoot for and just did not accomplish. It, it backfired. Yeah. So, basically, old Judge Reinhold decides that... <laughs> Oh God, we're, it's we're not funny. <laughs> we're never getting through. I can't help myself. Oh fuck! So he he decides that the nudist colony is indecent and basically kicks them off their land. The nudists decide to go back to their nudist colony, which is named Sunny Buttocks, and decide to have a suicide pact where. You know, the typical cultish suicide pact where they're all drinking what looks like Kool-Aid. And as they're all doing it, the old lady, Miss Drupal, does like a curse thing. Puts a curse on it to where they're going to come back. And think this is the point where the opening credits start? It was either right after the court case or right after the suicide pact. Uh, it, I think it was after the suicide pact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she her her piece like oh well, we'll come back and we'll kill all those religious zealots if they ever try and move in on our land and then you just see her like jump up out of her seat and kill over. Well, also before that, she's walking around the room giving a speech and slapping everybody in the room with her boobs. Because... <laughs> I wrote boob slaps. I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> she hits at least two people, maybe a third. And then it's just people ducking under them. Yeah. Sequence. Um, so, the opening credits, the song is pretty fucking goofy and kind of awesome, but also insanely long. I dug it. The opening credits were pretty sweet because they had all that, like, real terrible, like, 1990s <laughs> lightning and shit. What's crazy is that's probably remastered. Like, they probably made that. In like 2016 or whatever, well, and just like subbed in for whatever the original opening credits were. I mean, it kind of looked a lot like the Big Trouble in Little China type lightning. So like, I could see them. Maybe they just directly lifted it. That's where from like, Big Trouble. That's where twenty thousand dollars of their budget went. <laughs> that opening credit sequence. Um. So this opening credit sequence that goes on for probably like three minutes, like it's the length of a song, and it's just yeah a, they they wrote that song and they were getting the full use out of it. It's just a lot of terrible '90s animation over like tombstones and shit. That ends and yeah, opens. Awesome. It opens uh, to a preacher basically yelling fornication a thousand times in his like speech to his um what would the term be like congregation yeah congregation i kept wanting to say choir and i'm like that's not right He's so like, this is where i gave up trying to get every quote because that <laughs> was on fire i don't i don't remember the whole quote i'd only had time to type in male dingle parts and female squishy organs i, I wrote down our children can't praise the lord if they've got genitals in their mouth <laughs> he's basically just like screaming about the kids. yeah basically the kids all being sex freaks and not loving jesus and decides that everybody needs to send their kids to their you know their camp at the old sunny box nudist colony land what and, what was the name they changed the name of it to for it to be a summer camp but it was like a very blatant slashery type name. I don't remember. I don't know if I wrote that down. I may have been taking notes when they showed the sign because it's like Camp Murdery Time or some <laughs> dumb shit like that. Camp Murdery Time, copyrighted Nathan and Kit. We're making that movie. Yep, done. <laughs> Next podcast. <laughs> so. I don't even remember what this was in reference to, but my next note was I don't know what is happening. Is this for real? I got. I gotta imagine this when they're. That could in, be literally any point in the whole movie. It has to be when they show all of the kids. No, I know what it is. So the main character. One, the, two. The, no, that's not. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it was um, 
the one girl who I guess is supposed to be like the main character whose grandma is packing her suitcase. Fanny, Fanny White. Is that her name? Yeah. I just started that, writing names that's down. The only name I got was Fanny White because I was like, what? <laughs> so her grandma is like, she's not religious at all. And her grandma is and just decides to start packing her suitcase to send her to this camp and it'll put in like a shirt and then a crucifix and then like pants and a crucifix and then pulls out a like nine foot tall crucifix from the closet to try and put in a suitcase. And I think that's what my, is this for real comment was about. See, at this point I'm still like fairly consistently chuckling cause it, it's dumb, but it's like silly, inoffensive, dumb, yes, you know, this, this is right before you start getting into like the racism because the first line I wrote about racism was the next scene where they're all of the kids are in the van, and uh, to set this scene, you have. Oh, I guess I gotta take back my comment earlier. There are two African American people in this movie because I forgot about the, the lady that's like working for the church group or whatever. All right. So you have this old lady, and then her helper and then all of the kids and the kids are like two mentally handicapped redneck kids that are apparently supposed to be uh, gay that they never really man. like they just make a bunch of gay jokes about that was the oh, that was rough the <laughs> the hispanic japanese mixed kid Juan Tu you have Fanny Wipe our main character you have a generic like blonde girl who I guess is supposed to be like your your typical like blonde just generic teenager that's in a movie that just spends the entire movie screaming I want to be honest I don't even remember her she was the one that had her makeup running down like because all she does in the movie she's like oh okay yeah she's it. like Reverend Lovejoy's wife in yeah the Simpsons where she's just always yelling about like think about the children it's is, just that is this our first Simpsons reference on this no, if because if so, that's impressive. Island Claws was the Mayor Quimby dude. Oh, you're right. You're right. Um, you have the one Jesus freak kid that keeps quoting. He's Bible my verse. favorite. He's fucking terrible. Because <laughs> like, so the running joke with him is so everything he says is like, well, the Bible says, and then he gives a Bible quote, and he'll be like, Philippians seven sixteen Seagram seven. Yeah, it's he. It'll be like two real things from the Bible, and then just like throws out like some dumbass like reference as the third one. That's just to show that he has no idea what he's talking about. Uh, Seagram Seven one killed me. There's some. Oh, you have the one mullet dude whose name I don't remember. That's like the tough guy of the group, and his friend that's wearing the uh, catcher's mask. Oh, yeah. That we'll get to at some point. Cause I wrote down his... They finally referenced why he's wearing it. I just don't remember where. But anyway, you have this group of kids in this van. And this is where the first songs comes in, where they're all singing. And you also have the first moment of racism, where the quote was, I think in the song, it was, With all of their nagging, you'd think they were the Jews. And I, I just, God, I face palmed. <laughs> I literally face palmed. I was like, "Oh fuck!" I, I'm pretty sure I just, uh, I put as the note, casual anti-Semitism. I just wrote down the quote with just WTF yeah. after it. <laughs> so that, I was, I was doing notes, and I was like, "There are so many musical numbers," and then just immediately, all caps, "Wow, anti-Semitism." Yeah, like that. Like, like I said, like I just went into it cold, and that came out of nowhere, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, And then one of the other lines in this song was, I don't fornicate, I don't masturbate, I don't even punctuate. <laughs> Which Fucking Christ. I, I think was coming from like one of the like tough kids, just to be like, look how tough I am. I don't use periods. Oh, fuck. And then like there was, I think it, like I just, like this song had a bunch of it had a little bit of everything. Yeah, like, I just wrote, this is racist as fuck, holy shit, because, like, I couldn't get close yeah. quick enough, and I didn't want to make this movie any longer on myself. I just put, this movie just got so fucking racist. 
<laughs> yeah. So I think it's like as they get to the camp. It, oh, go ahead. It, a quick aside. It should be it should be noted that uh, Juan Tu, the half Japanese, half Mexican kid, has an egregiously awful stereotypical like Japanese accent. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's he like there's no uh, all of his R's and W's are mixed and like it's just like what you would see exactly what you would expect. It's you th- know this is going to be my second office reference of this episode because I have another one that I wrote down but like it's like when Michael Scott is doing his character ping on the office. Yeah. It's pretty much that but like a hundred times worse. If you have an older relative, then you have heard this. Yeah, this basically, if you've yeah. seen any movie with an Asian character from like the '80s or before, you've heard this. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so all of these kids get to the camp, and this is where you get the first scene of like the zombies start coming out of the ground, and it's really terrible because they're all just kind of like a gray color but they're all covered in like leaves and stuff so i guess they don't have to have nudity which you would think you would want more of in nudist colony of the dead but again very disappointed for some reason a foot with a shoe comes out of the ground first in one of them which dumbfounded me for one how are you coming out of the ground feet first and two why are you wearing shoes as a nudist? That's a good call. I didn't even think of that. Um, what is Plot that? holes. Unbelievable oh. <laughs> nudist colony so, of the dead. So they all start coming out of the ground and they're singing a song, which I wrote down the line, Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of a Bible thumper. Which like doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> They gave up. They gave up trying. That was the last song they wrote, and they just yeah. jammed it at the start of the movie. Like, whatever. This is, it's fine. This is when you start getting into what was probably my favorite scene, but is also one of the most racist scenes. And I was like, it, I gotta say it's my favorite because it was, like, overtly racist and just kind of, like, melted my fucking brain. Where the two church group, like, the adults, go and meet the park ranger, uh, Ranger Big Butts. Who then goes into a speech about how every time these group of church people show up, they get attacked and die. But he tells them this in a rap that is like super mid-80s, like a white dude from the mid-80s being like, I know, rap, rap, rippity rap, 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 rap type shit. It's fucking... (laughs) Like he gets... He just stands Damn up. This movie. He just stands up and he's wearing a bunch of like a Mr. T gold chains. Yeah. And then the it's the old lady and the African American lady that's helping her. And then the two mentally handicapped kids. And I think maybe one other person. And the entire time he's rapping, they're like dancing in the background. And it's just fucking unbearable. Like, this is where my like I, my office. Reference. Maybe that's where I seized up. So, did you watch The Office at all? Uh, the first four seasons. Okay, there's an episode in later seasons where Michael Scott makes a movie called Threat Level Midnight, and he does a dance in it that like it's called Do the Scarn because his name his, his name's Michael Scarn. It's Michael, Michael Scarn Scott movie, and, and like. <laughs> Like, anybody that knows that reference pretty much immediately has an image in their head of what this is like. Because he's just in a bar, and he starts singing the song, and everybody in the bar just gets up and starts dancing with him. And it's essentially the exact same level of, like, this movie. Except it's a super racist, like, rap song. Oh, God. And I just, I wrote down, how was this movie from 1991? Like, you would think somebody would have been like, this is probably not a good idea. Yeah, let's not do this, guys. Can we... Can we pass? I think at some point after this, because this is the first time I realized the dude's name was Juan, too, because that was my next note. I don't think I caught it when I was trying to write down everything in the van. Oh, so much happened in the van. Yeah. 
Um, so the park ranger gets done with his rap and is just like, I ain't staying for this shit, and it just fucking bolts, leaving them all themselves. Smart. Yeah, he's very the, smart. The only smart character in this movie because he's not in it for most of it. <laughs> And so you cut to all of these kids at a campfire. And this is the scene that I believe was remastered because it looks like absolute garbage. It like... Rehearsal fire. Yeah, it's shot so badly. And it's just like all of the kids sitting around. And it's like super grainy. It's like whatever. But like compared to the rest of the movie, like you can tell. It just it, it looks stands shit. out. Um, yeah, so compared like, to the rest of Nudist Colony of the Dead, it looks terrible. Yeah, and this is where you get you start getting your first jokes about kind of what all of these characters' like basic personality traits are, because you have the two mentally handicapped kids playing strip poker and like legitimately just like getting nude, and like nobody has like any qualms about these two kids sitting in the dirt playing strip poker and like talking about, like, every time they've seen each other's dicks. Um, and you basically just get, like, a bunch of shitty dialogue that goes nowhere that's all just kind of overtly terrible and racist. But you also get shots of the old lady getting killed by the zombies by them just bashing her head against a wall, like, She handled times. it super well. The old lady? So they get up. Yeah, they get up. Like the zombies, and they get in there, and she turns around and she's like, Oh no! And they grab her, and she's just immediately like, All right, well, I'm gonna start praying, I suppose. Yeah, I'm and going to see Jesus. They're, they're bashing her head against the wall, and she's like, Hmm, well, this kind of sucks, I guess. Hmm. It's, it's like not a big deal. It's like, it's like one of the, like the worst, like death kind of scenes I think I've ever seen because it's literally just like they're hitting her head against the wall there's no sort of blood it just looks like she's just like lightly head banging and then they just are like you're just like oh well I guess she's dead she's over now and they also kill the other adult that I don't remember if you actually see that or if you just see their heads in the pool later uh, I think you just see their heads in the pool yeah. later you basically cut to likes morning and all the kids are just like oh where are the adults and the yeah, they go like searching, and the, like they find both of their heads tied together in a pool, and it's like that. And there's like one other shot of like a sort of like remote kind of gore or like effects in this movie. The movie uh, really didn't deliver on any front. Oh, I think <laughs> fuck this! Like this just outraged me to no end. So. In the scene at the campfire, or the next morning where the kids are just kind of talking, and the one girl asks the dude why he wears the catcher's mask, and the reason he wears the catcher's mask is, spoilers, I don't want anyone to get mad about this because this is a huge plot point, is that somebody told him he looks like Barry Manilow. <laughs> was it, was it that uh, one, of the women, one of the women says to like try and comfort him? It's like... Um. Oh God damn it! I just blanked on it. Like, oh, you look like this famous baseball catcher instead of Barry Manilow, and yeah, he just like it was walks off. Something like that. It was some name that like I had no idea because I haven't paid attention to sports since like Super Tech Mobile in like 1992 or some shit. But like, I was I was so mad that like I I, I know the joke they're going for. They're like Barry Manilow. Kids will laugh at that because it's an old man. Like, it's so, like, number one, why a catcher's mask? And like, why no, not? Like, <laughs> so infuriating. And I think this it's is great visibility. This is a point two where you get a lot of talk from Juan too, and you get like I just wrote this Asian accent is upsetting. So upsetting. And you also see the like jock kind of dude with the mullet plucking his armpit hair which was confusing as shit to me yeah I don't I don't understand I, I don't understand any of this film I have I'm calling it a film though oh yeah this is not just a movie I don't know how this didn't win an Oscar the my next quote 
was I think when they're killing the old lady and um fuck what's her name the the zombie old lady <laughs> Paul knows yeah I hear you you know um she says while they're killing her meet your maker booger hair <laughs> <laughs> And my, I wrote that quote, and I just wrote, "I wish I was dead." <laughs> I'm booger heads a good insult. Oh fuck! I forgot about this too. Jesus I'm Christ! That in. Juan too at the campfire is eating a hot dog in a bun with chopsticks. Like, <laughs> I must have looked away at that this, point. I don't recall that. This is Jesus just infuriating. Um. Oh. And so, as the kids discover the, you know, like the adult supervision's heads in the pool, they all start go running to the park ranger's office to get help, and they discover a sign on the door that says, I may be gone, but at least eyes alive, I apocalypse Z from Ranger Big Butts. <laughs> it's, God damn it. I fucking, I hate this movie so much. This this whole episode of the podcast is me laughing at Judge Reinhold and then just saying <laughs> "God damn it" every four minutes. And like there, like, this is another thing. This is uh, like just infuriated me to no end. Is that as they're like going through the park ranger stuff, um, Fanny comes across all of the papers that the park ranger's office has been keeping about all of the murders there. That apparently nobody has done anything yeah, no about. One, no one's looking to do it. Like, yeah, you know, whatever. I think we've also passed up like two very terrible songs at this point. I'm fine with that. Yeah. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um. So they're all running around, freaking out, trying to figure out what to do. Zombies start attacking people, and people kind of start dying off. And at this point, the jock dude. Start talking to a severed head that is talking back to him. And it's like, it's fucking ridiculous, but like also kind of awesome because it's just real goofy. Because he's, he's just asking him questions, right? Like he's. Yeah. And he keeps dropping it. Out. He keeps yeah. dropping the head, and the head's just like, ow. And then he picks it back up and like apologizes. It's real stupid. For, for no reason. Um, I can't, fuck, I can't, there was something else I want to talk about around this point, but I don't think I wrote it down, and this is about the point that, like, I blacked out for probably, like, ten minutes of the yeah. movie. <laughs> it's all, like, the stuff where they're, like, trying. You're better than I am. You're, you're bringing up stuff, and I'm like, did that happen? Well, Fucking Christ. there was a real racist line where they're, like. Of course there was. <laughs> Why wouldn't they are They're trying to leave by getting in like the van they drove in and they ask Juan they're like can you can hotwire this and <laughs> uh, this this podcast should just be videos of just Kip's reaction of just everything my god <laughs> I'm sure you can hear me slapping my face every other <laughs> every other sentence this is another scene too where I think they're like they're all in the van and they all start singing again and it just is just like another like four minute song it's it. Oh, this is. I this is when I came to because I think I was writing notes and I may have been like looking at just kind of like trying to find some like info about the movie and I looked up and everyone's singing in the van and they all have Stevie Wonder sunglasses on and they're all like doing that head bob and shit and it's just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fuck this movie. I take it back. Everybody <laughs> should watch this movie. <laughs> it's it's Oh my god. Fucking Everyone go and watch this movie and then start your own podcast about it. Everyone should mm. just go spend the like two ninety nine to just buy it on Amazon. And just oh. like, I just want to see the director be like, what the fuck? Just a sudden surge. Like, what? Gets um, his first paycheck. There was like some, like pretty much the rest of this movie is just like all of the zombie nudists attacking people and it's just like they kill off everybody except for the main character like real quickly yeah super quick mostly off scene 
the Bible dude gets like, I think it was him that gets cut in half and his legs yeah. just keep running. And I was like, okay, that's kind of legit. Cool. <laughs> like it was real dumb, but kind of like in a fun way. That was the other big chunk of their budget. Yeah. Like they running legs. And this is where all of my notes, like my five or six notes in a row, that was just like, why is this so long? This sucks. Oh, cool. More racism. Oh, yeah. And then, like, the zombies apparently are driving a car and run down Juan 2 while he's talking to the Jesus kid up in heaven. Where the Jesus kid is just like, no, it's fine. Like, if you stop running, like, everything will be okay. You'll be fine. And, like, Juan is like, I don't know. I'm going to get hit by this car. And the Jesus kid is just like, no, it'll be cool. Yeah, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Stops running, gets hit by a car. Just immediately nailed. Fuck. And I think this is the point that I realized. I was like, there's a surprising lack of nudity in this movie. (laughs) Because like, it just... the 75 minute mark. I was like, hmm. It just dawned on me. Because I was like, there's a scene where all of the zombies are kind of like dancing around and shit during a song that's kind of like not really ripping off thriller but kind of yeah and i I got just looked and i was like oh there's like no nudity in this like whatsoever these none of these nudists are actually nude i i don't remember who died in this one but my note was just lol steamroller because somebody gets run over by a steamroller, but I can't remember, like, who it was. It would be really win places. I, there's a steamroller in this park. Like, <laughs> yeah, like this, this nudist colony that has been turned into a summer camp has a steamroller. I just wrote, they, these are creative zombies with their kills. I would never have thought to get a steamroller. Yeah, in a, in a Give park. them props for that. And so, baby gets down to... Our main character, Fanny, who's, like, slowly getting circled by these zombies. And all of a sudden, like, a ladder falls from the sky. And she looks up, and there's a helicopter. And it's Ranger Big Butts coming to save the day. And she climbs up and is, you know, getting away. And hugs Ranger Big Butts. And his quote was, you gotta stop. You're gonna give me a boner. (laughs) I was I was actually like actively paying attention at that point, and he said that, and then I stopped. I was like, <laughs> "Why? Why? Why did I even bother?" <laughs> it, I I would have been happy if the movie just ended it right there. Like that should have been the last line. But you go you go back to the church, and this preacher is you know yelling about fornication and shit again. And Fanny goes to talk to him and is, you know, like, why did you send us there? Like, all of this stuff was going on. You had to know. And he's, like, talking to her and, like, walks into his office and comes back out. And, shocker, he's a zombie. He was part of the whole thing. And he's sending all of these people there to die to get revenge on the church group. And I just wrote, what the fuck is this ending? It just like ends some Shyamalan, there. Some Shyamalan shit. Yeah. This is... <laughs> Twist. You think you think this dude was maybe Fuck. like Shyamalan, but like under a like a pseudonym as like his first <laughs> movies. <laughs> this is how he was starting out. This eh, this movie ends, and then you just go into the credits with another super long with song. That, that super sweet nudist colony of the dead theme song. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I would buy I didn't this. Realize, I didn't realize it was an original song until they said out loud, like, Nudist Colony of the Dead. It's like, like, what? Musically, most of these songs are, like, pretty good. They're very, like, goofy, Saved by the Bell type shit. Oh, yeah. Very upbeat. Yeah. And it's just the lyrics are all just full of sweet, sweet racism. I... I, as we were talking about it, I kind of just want people to go watch it because it's pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> Changed mind over the last forty minutes. <laughs> it, <laughs> I think Reminiscing. I, lo- I think I love this movie now. <laughs> now I'm just gonna go watch all the rest of them. This shit this dude made. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the movie. But there was a shit ton of cool news I wrote down. Now for the trauma. Yeah. Um uh the first 
news. Yeah, on the news front. Yeah, the first news thing I had is mostly visual, but they just they released a bunch of photos from the Pet Cemetery remake. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, it actually looks good, and I had no idea John Lithgow right. was. Right, that was, that was the it. note I wrote down. I was like, John Lithgow's in this. I'm fucking in. Yeah, hell yes, I'm absolutely in. I, that like because like I like Pet Cemetery. It's probably like probably my favorite Stephen King adaptation, but like I don't need a remake of it. And then I saw yeah. John Lithgow, and I was like, okay, I'm in. And uh, it's also being done by uh, the guy who did it, right? I think yeah. they're in some way involved. I think so. Like producing, maybe. Probably they're probably just gonna have like the same production company do like a bunch of these King adaptations. I'm all right with it. Stop. Paul's uh, just excited. Right? I'm going to have to add him to like the names on this podcast if he just keeps... <laughs> um, I saw the picture of the cat from Pet Cemetery. Yeah. Like, fuck that. It, I mean, they're just pictures, so it's kind of hard to tell, but like, it kind of looks cool, at least from those pictures. That cat looks insane. And though, so, I guess sticking with sort of Stephen King news. Did you know Shudder was doing a creep show series? Yes. That like looks fucking super cool. Um kind of split on it because Creep Show as a series sounds fantastic, right? Yeah. And they released a very cool EC comic style uh poster for it to promote it. But it's done by Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead, and I absolutely fucking hate The Walking Dead. Yeah, so, but if you look at Greg Nicotero's like other stuff, yeah. like especially you, so, just, you know, like the the effects will be like top notch. Oh yeah, for sure. And you got to figure it'll probably be a lot like Tales from the Crypt was, where it'll be like different writers, cool. different directors, because as of right now, they have. Stephen King and his son are working on it. And I think the, oh. other, the other name they've written as a writer is uh, Joe Lansdale, who did Bubba Hotep, which is okay. the best movie I'm, of all time. <laughs> I'm way I'm way back in. Yeah. And, like, Greg Nicotero was kind of talking about how they were doing it, and he said that the tone will be, like, a serious or a series of like shifts where it'll be kind of like tales from the cryptish where it'll be like kind of lighthearted, but then some that are just like scary. Each story yeah. will be as long as needed. So it won't be set to like a specific format. So if somebody's just like, well, I have this story, but it's going to be, you know, 50 minutes. Okay. Well, there you go. You got 50 minutes or whatever, which is pretty cool. And they're talking about doing like a digital comic with each episode that will then at some point try and release into like a physical collection. Oh, okay. That'd be dope. Yeah. That's uh, I don't know. It sounds kind of cool, especially like, um, I guess like all of that stuff will be specifically for people like on shutter since it'll be a shutter series, but right. That's, that sounds pretty sweet. I'm, I'm on board cause creep show two isn't great, but it's not terrible either. It's fun. Creep show. I love, I love creep show too. Do you like, I, <laughs> It's not as good as the first, obviously, but like I like the I like the scene where they're on the water a lot, like that one. Yeah. But like I hate the one with the Indian. Uh, old Chief Woodenhead. Yeah. Mostly just because like I th- every person in that scene or that selection, I just they drive me crazy. I don't know why. Every time I watch it, I'm like, I don't know why I'm watching this. I really like a uh, Thanks for the Ride, Lady. Yeah. I take it back. Creep Show Two is pretty good. <laughs> I don't know. Like anytime I'm I think, of, anytime I think of Creep Show, though, I just think of like Leslie Nielsen and like that <laughs> that whole scene. Fuck that selection or you know story. Vignette. Is fucking great. Um, do we Leslie also Nielsen and Ted Danson. Perfect. Yes. There was also news today that I guess George Romero had forty to fifty scripts that he had wrote that had been had, uh, just are kind of sitting there like i guess his wife was talking about Nuts. it yeah and apparently an unreleased movie that he had made in like 73 oh what that she said was like it's a scary movie but like it kind of deals with ageism 
So I don't know. That's interesting. Kind of interesting, and I guess she's kind of working about or looking at. You yeah, know, getting that get released done, or something. I guess is looking at like people to maybe try and look at some of his scripts to maybe start making those, and apparently. His go karting of the dead movie or whatever it was that never got made sounded phenomenal. Is it Road of the Dead? Maybe, it's, maybe that's it. They, it's like they also mentioned that he had Zombie a, Mad Max, some shit. He had a movie called Road of the Dead that's like in the works that I guess was already kind of like being worked on. But they did there's like no sort of like explanation of what it was about. It's just part of like the Dead series, which I am an ardent apologist to the last three survival oh, of the dead is pretty terrible but like i like diary of the dead and like i like land of the dead land of the dead is fantastic in my opinion i think i i cannot abide your takes on survival or diary sir well, survival is, <laughs> survival is not good it's just kind of boring but like i don't know diary i think was like a good concept that i think maybe like if somebody else made that movie, I think it could have been really good, like just a found footage type or you know, like I, even even a younger Romero. Yeah, I think like Romero in the nineties making that movie, like dude, like during Day of the Dead kind of era would have been phenomenal, but I don't know. I don't hate that movie as much as everybody else seems to. It's just a typical Romero movie where everybody in it is completely unlikable though. Like <laughs> he does not have characters that like I ever want to live. Um I guess he also had a book that he was writing called The Living Dead that was somewhat unfinished that's currently being worked on by a guy named Daniel Klaus, who I guess wrote the novelization of The Shape of Water, and that's supposed to be a tentative release of, like, fall 2019. Interesting. So apparently there's a bunch of George Romero shit possibly coming in the future. Yeah. Which... I'm all about. I'm gonna have of the dead forever. Yeah, I will buy all of them, whether they're good or not, because I'm just like fucking huge Romero fan. Like I'll, I'll at least spend money to see those instead of being like oh, I'll just wait till it comes to like a streaming service. <laughs> um, there was also a story about um Neil Blumkamp's like alien movie that is no longer happening. Or I guess he released so some mad about it. Neil Blomkamp's terrible alien movie would have been so much better than Ridley Scott's terrible alien movie. I like the Ridley Scott ones. <laughs> like, I, I don't... like Covenant. I enjoy Covenant. I don't think it's great, but I enjoy it and I'll watch it. And I like what he was going for. But it feels kind of disjointed and rushed in places. Yeah, I feel like Covenant probably had like a lot of stuff cut out of it. Yes. Or like... It and was, it was still, like, four hours long. Like, you know that movie was probably, like, a massive script, but had to have, like, cut down to get to whatever. And, like, I love Prometheus, but, like, I, I kind of wish they would have done Prometheus as, like, they should not have told anybody it was an alien movie. Yeah. Because, like, could you imagine if you went to, like, oh, I'll just go see this Ridley Scott movie in the theater, and then all of a sudden, like, you just start putting together, like... really anything. Yeah, yeah. That, and it's like, oh, planet First like said, LV, whatever. Yeah. I'd have fucking lost my mind. But I guess in Blomkamp's, Blomkamp's, however the fuck you pronounce his name, his xenomorph was going to have four arms, kind of like tying it back into like the alien queen. It and looked he, very cool. Yeah, and he like released like some kind of like, you know, art design. Like a little maquette or something, yeah. Um, But there's also a note in this that like I didn't know about that. Apparently, because of, like, the Disney deal, they think that the Ridley Scott are probably over, too. Yeah. Which, like, it's kind of a bummer because there's a bunch of shit that, like, you know happens in between, like, Prometheus, Alien Covenant, and then into Alien. So, like, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of I was... bummed that that is apparently going to be over, and it would be kind of cool if, like, at least Ridley Scott would be like, oh, well, this was, like, the story. Yeah. I like I like where Covenant was headed, and I would have been super curious to see how he picked that up and see if he could do anything with it. But yeah, and I'll pretty much watch Michael Fassbender do anything, especially yeah, like pretty much kiss himself. <laughs> yeah, him teaching himself how to play 
a sexually charged recorder, I'm I'm in. Yeah. He's kind of the saving grace of that movie. The one hundred percent. Um and also in alien news and kind of like an add to of an alien news story we did on like maybe the second episode. The alien isolation like comic sequel they've released like more details to. And that it's basically a sequel to Alien Isolation and the comic series Aliens Defiance. It'll be called Aliens Resistance, starring Amanda Ripley. It'll be a Dark Horse Comics book. And it's tentatively going to be released January 23rd. So, like, not super far away. I am going to buy and read all of those. <laughs> Needs and, more Batman. Yeah. The last thing I had was, I guess, at Salem Horror Fest, I think, last week, something like that. Lyra was there and teased that she is working on a new movie, or, like, pitching, a, pitching a new movie to, like, Netflix, Hulu, yeah. Shudder, which I'm fucking a thousand percent for because her movies rule. Like I've, I, I hope Shudder picks it up. I'll be too. And I'm not just saying that because I want that Shutter sponsorship sponsor of yeah. uh, Shutter, but uh, no, I think they do. I think they do well with that, and I think that would be a perfect companion piece to uh, whatever Joe Bob yeah. show that they're working on. I'm that'd be really cool. Super into this idea. I've been like an Elvira fan since I was a little kid, so I'm stoked. She's still kind of out there doing stuff. It'd be right. cool to see her do a new movie, or even like. You could do, like, another thing where she just watches and, like, commentates on just, like, shitty B-movies. But I guess Shudder would probably just look at it as, like, well, we already got Joe Bob Briggs, so. And I know... Yeah, I'm kind of both. I mean, at one point, Hulu had, like, her actual, like, her movies and then, like, a bunch of movies with her commentary on them. So, I don't know. I guess see Hulu maybe trying to grab that, too. Well, I don't know. That'd be... Yeah. It winds up somewhere. Hopefully yeah. not Netflix. Netflix is terrible. Yeah, I've, I've been looking. <laughs> like anytime I'm looking for movies, I'm like, all we're doing is like Amazon Prime. Like we should just look at like I'm like I'll look at Netflix. Like everybody has Netflix, but like everything on there either. Looks... The only terrible, the only terrible movies you're gonna find on Netflix by Netflix. Yeah, and they all look like terrible for like the wrong reasons. They don't look like fun terrible. No, they well, just look like... like when I did. Yeah. I did that poll on Twitter for, like, the next movie, and I put, like, that Day of the Dead sequel, the Ugh. the sequel to the remake. Yeah. Just because I'm, like, I I feel like if people tell us to watch this, I'll sit through it. <laughs> but like, I'm glad you didn't. I, Thank you, everyone. At least three people <laughs> voted for it, and they're literal, literal monsters. But, not, are they people? Yeah. Basically, the options were Day of the Dead 2, Chopping Mall, Deathbed, The Bed That Eats People, and <laughs> Uncle Sam, and Chopping Mall 1 by a large margin, which is awesome. Thank because, you, everyone. Yeah, Chopping Mall fucking rules. Yes, I'm excited to watch Chopping Mall. It's been a while. Basically, after this movie, after Nudist Colony of the Dead and Island Claws, we... It'll to get a movie that... At least I don't recall this yeah. stuff with racism, you know? <laughs> well, I think the next, we have our next three, at least the movies like through Halloween sort of planned out, which will be Chopping Mall next, which is on Amazon Prime currently. And then the week after that, if we can work it out, Shane Mathis is going to come on and we're going to talk about Demons. Yeah. Which is on Shutter, fucking super good. Nuts. Also, kind of racist with the pimp. <laughs> yeah. And then... As long as we get, like, a break from yeah. horrible over at race. The week of Halloween. This one, I think people will have to buy if they haven't seen it before, but... Yui Bowles, House of the Dead, which Kit has never seen. And I can't. Up, up until Nudist Colony of the Dead, I would have said is maybe the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> but, uh... After this, no. House of the Dead is real terrible, but it's super fun because of how terrible it is. You're going to love it. Um, yeah, so that's at least the next three weeks. I think we talked about 
around Thanksgiving doing thanks killing and yeah probably just doing like a bunch of Christmas ones in like December cuz like I stumbled across that like Mother Krampus movie and got to get Santa Slay in there yeah. starring Bill Goldberg <laughs> we should just do a month of just like wrestling ones where we do like Santa Slay oh, yeah. and then like See No Evil and the Leprechaun movie with uh oh, fuck Horace I own Adam. that movie and I haven't that, watched it cuz I know it's bad no it's fucking terrible like it's and nothing like the original Leprechaun movies. He's playing, like, Hornswoggle's essentially in, like, a monster costume. Has no lines. It's real weird. Like, I don't know why. That's a waste of Hornswoggle. It's, it's We're crazy. being honest. You, you need to watch it, because it's fucking... You're Needs be, a strong word. I probably will, though. No. You, <laughs> you need to watch it. <laughs> it like, you're going to be like, I don't understand how this is part of the Leprechaun franchise. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, unless you had anything else, um, you watch anything cool lately? Uh, just this morning I just did my uh, traditional doubleheader of *Sun Haunted Hill* and Thirteen Ghosts* oh, man, for some nice early two so thousands garbage. Wonderful, by I've the way. Basically, just been putting. Other on, than that, nothing, nothing new. <laughs> I've been putting on like the Shutter TV sp- sponsor a Shutter. <laughs> Shutter. I've been putting on Shutter TV as like whatever's playing. So I watched like Prom Night One and Two the other day, and I watched like so, Magic, the movie with uh, Anthony Hopkins. And I still gotta watch that one. It's weird. Like he 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 still looks like he's like fifty somehow in that movie. He always has. And then like the he dummy, came out of the womb like that. The dummy in it looks just like him, and it's fucking the creepiest oh. thing. Never mind, I'm not watching it. That sounds awful. It's yeah, it's not good. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't wanna see that. Yeah, I was mostly just kinda of watching it like while doing other shit. But yeah, I don't know. I think that's pretty much all I've really watched lately. Just a bunch of uh like Bob's burgers came back, so I've been watching that and just like whatever typical shit I normally watch. Um yeah, you also We'll probably hear a opening theme song this episode, made for us by um, John Petikow. Petikow, not really sure how to pronounce his name. He uh, reached out about making us a theme song, and I told him make it John Carpenter, but super cheesy. And he nailed it. That. It's pretty fucking sweet. And uh, shout out for our new logo. Yeah. Also, my friend Katie Cottrell. Who's also whose name I don't know how to pronounce because I've never said it in real life. <laughs> um, made us a fucking sick logo. So good. And it's pretty fucking awesome. So like, if you are download this or as of today, you can listen to it on Spotify, which is pretty fucking sweet. Um, you'll see the logo. It's pretty amazing. So shout out to them for yeah giving us Thank shit. You guys. <laughs> Uh, John will probably actually John had reached out too about if we ever do Wolf Cop he wants to be on it so oh hell yeah I'm all about that because I've never actually watched oh I I watch Wolf Cop a lot so I'm always down to watch Wolf Cop yeah I was like that gives me an excuse to finally sit down and watch that and I told Katie whenever we do a Steve King movie we will have her on because she's like the old, like the one person I know that knows pretty much everything about Stephen King, so I was like, okay, well, you're gonna have to watch Maximum Overdrive then, because <laughs> it, it's got to be Maximum Overdrive, Graveyard Shift, or Silver Bullet. Yeah, I <laughs> thinner. We'll just do thinner. That movie sucks too. I, I love thinner. <laughs> I, I saw that in a theater, like when I was a kid. Oh, I'm I've, legit jealous. I haven't seen it since, so it might be better than I remember. But I hated it when I was a kid. It's not better than you remember, but it's probably more entertaining. Maximum Overdrive was, was so good. It was like the dumbest fucking plot. But anyway, yeah, that's it. Shout out to them. Thanks for anybody listening. Um, like I said, we're on Spotify now, so if you have that, you don't necessarily have to go download episodes. iTunes and Stitcher hopefully coming soon. Should be hearing back from them sometime this week. Um, you can also... 
Follow us on Twitter at I Hope You Suffer, Facebook at I Hope You Suffer Pod. And I think that's about it. I got nothing else. Yep, same. All right. I hope you suffer, but why? But why?